Let's see i am still getting ready here so we'll uh we'll go to another song here how about this one for the church triumphant is alive and well. Let the church be the church. Let the people rejoice. For we've settled the question and we've made our choice. Let the anthem ring out songs of victory story swell for the church triumphant is alive and well this old ship's been through some battles before storms and tempests and rocks on the shore though the whole Inside it's safe and dry, it will carry its cargo to the port in the sky. Let the church be the church, let the people rejoice, for we've settled the question and we've made our choice. Let the anthem ring out, songs of victory swell, for the church triumphant is alive and well. Let the church be the church, let the people rejoice. For we've settled the question, and we've made our choice. Let the anthem ring out, songs of victory swell. For the church triumphant is alive and well. For the church triumphant. 
church triumphant is alive and well. Amen. The church triumphant. Let's see. Let's try another one. How about this one? Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the see we might do two more we'll see how about this one i have heard of a land on the far away strand tis a beautiful home of the soul built by Jesus us on high that we never shall die tis the land where we'll never grow never grow never grow in a land where we'll never
let's see. Let's pick up another one here. Hmm. Not that one. Oh, we get Let me see here. Try this one. This is one of my favorite songs. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that thou art. I don't like that version. I'll go to a different one. <laughs> I don't like that one. Let's see. This one I do like. Once I wandered in sin's black night And there was no way I could make my wrongs right And that old accuser to the Lord did cry He is a sinner and now he must die Father, I'll go, I'll pay his sin debt in Calvary's flow. I'll bury in my body the marks of the cross to save that child who is sin sick and lost. And it's still the blood that saves from sin it's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea it's still the blood of jesus that brings victory to me Some men count on the times they pray through But when the battle's over and my last song is sung I'll go home through the blood of my father's precious son And it's still the blood that saves from sin it's still the blood that cleanses within From the high star in heaven to the depths of the sea It's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me From the high star in heaven to the depths of the sea That brings victory to me. And it's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. Amen. That's right. Still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. And uh, that one was Ben Everson there on uh, Still the Blood of Jesus. Now, all right, we are going to cover a few things. I missed some of your songs, said somebody. Is the blonde man with a brown coat blind? I have no idea. I didn't ask him. Um, 
Ryan Jacobson is on. All right, Ryan. Better be paying attention. There's going to be a quiz at the end of this. So let's make sure you're paying attention real close. All right. All right, everybody. Now, I want to talk to you quickly before we get started here about our trip coming up to Europe. All right. I want to always put you in remembrance of these things. Uh, and just remember that we have this trip coming up. Brother Andrew and I were still pray for our paperwork. We're waiting for that to come in and all that good stuff. And uh, if you would, please uh, pray for us and how you would like to support us. If you'd like to, if the Lord lays it on your heart to support us, uh, we uh, we're paying as we go here and the Lord is providing the money and everything for our trip and pray for Mary's visa also over there and uh, pray for Mary's visa and Carl's MasterCard because his is going to be maxed out after this. I'm just kidding. But anyway, pray for Mary's visa and uh, pray for Brother Andrew and I and our paperwork to come back and pray for as we, we're, we're you know, getting all the flights. We, we've spent a lot of money on flights and, and uh, Airbnbs and getting everything ready. And, and just uh, if you would pray for us about that and also what the Lord would have you to do. If you do want to give to this, uh, here's our PayPal address, salvationpreacher at gmail.com. Here is our cash app, uh, Pastor Cooley. Uh, 76. And here is the Apple Pay, Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com. Uh, whoops, let's see. That's that. Uh, and then I don't think there's anything else. A uh, Venmo. We do have Venmo. We do have Apple Pay. Um, and all that stuff. So uh let's see. And uh let's see. Oh, and, or you can mail it to 1030 Highway 3 South, Northfield, Minnesota. That's 55057. Okay, so if the Lord so lays it on your heart, and uh, then please uh, give towards that for our ministry, okay? For uh, And we will be broadcasting again to remind you, watch the video if you haven't watched it yet, uh, but uh, we'll be broadcasting live uh, from different locations, and then sometimes you'll have to watch it later because we'll be on European time, not American time. If you're over here, it'll be a little different, okay? So pray for us about that, uh, and uh, we're we're getting our website up and running before then too, so people can go there. But you're going to be able to watch it live on Rumble. You're going to be able to watch it live on uh, on different uh, on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to watch it live on uh, probably Facebook. We'll have multi. We'll be uh, have multiple uh, broadcasting abilities. Lord willing, if the signal's good. If not, things will be recorded, and when we get to the hotels, we'll upload different things if we can't for some reason. I'll be preaching at different locations. I'll be preaching in Scotland. I'll be preaching with Brother Ross Duncan and a few men there. I'll also be preaching at a meeting on Sunday uh, there in Scotland, Lord willing, for a couple times at least. Uh, there on Sunday in Scotland, I'll be spending time with Joe McDonald over there in Ireland. Uh, we'll spend one day there, then we will head off for Rome. We'll be five k five days in the UK. We'll get there Monday. We'll be there till Friday, and then we'll take off for Ireland. Uh, excuse me, Scotland. And uh, so, if you want to meet up at any of those sites, we're going to be at a bunch of those sites over there and preaching and looking at different things and all kinds of different things like that. So. Uh, if you if you would like, uh, just you know, get a hold of us. I'm gonna try to preach over there in the UK at that uh, freedom of speech place there, that whatever they call that that park they have over there. I'm gonna try to preach there. If you're over there, you let us know. Uh, then uh, after it, then we're heading to Italy after that, and as we go to Italy, uh, and. Uh, after Italy, or we'll be in Italy. We're going to go to the Waldensies thing. We're going to go to uh, the uh, the Waldensian sites over there, uh, the sites of persecution. We're going to be in Rome. We're going to we're going to uh, we're going to view the Vatican. We're going to view uh, the Bone Chapel and a number of different things, the Colosseum. Lord willing, all those places for video footage and to, you know, broadcast live from some of those locations, tell the truth and the story about what happened in those places. And uh, bring that footage back and use it uh, later uh, for that. So we'll be 
covering a lot of space in two weeks. We'll be moving. We'll be booking. But uh, the forum, that's right. Uh, some of the, the the temples of the gods and goddesses over there uh, will be all around there. The Jesuit churches over there. Right? And uh, tell the truth about the Jesuit order, obviously, and all those things. So, I mean, we'll be over there. Uh, and we'll be viewing those different things, those different locations, and all kinds of different things like that. So you pray for us, and Lord willing, if you can help, then please do. This is how you do that, okay? All right. I'm going to be reminding you that until we get, get going, until we get on the in the plane and we're taking off, all right? So you remember those things and pray for us that the Lord would keep us and bless us and... and uh, you know, take care of us while we're out there roaming around and looking at things and and uh, and trying to bring some good stuff. So, over in Ireland, we're going to go to Newgrange and visit some of those. Uh, Fabian's praying for me because I have to deal with Carl for a few weeks. Amen. I need prayer for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, all right. You pray for us. And if you can do something about it, please do. You have all the ways to get a hold of us and what you can give towards that and all that good stuff, okay? So uh uh anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get moving here. All right. Now, this story makes me sick. This Jesus revolution is nothing but a CIA op. The whole thing is, okay? The whole thing is, and it's a satanic op if you don't believe it's a CIA op, okay? So we'll give you that. It's a satanic one. But anyway. All right? So let's watch, and you're going to see. Now, before I keep going, this is a movie about the Jesus people movement. This Jesus people movement was built on LSD. That might sound crazy to some of you, but I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove that this was a CIA op. This was to infiltrate churches. Timothy Leary was working with the federal government. Lonnie Frisbee was a was an unrepentant homosexual till the day he died. Charismatics are phony Christians. They got another spirit about them. And a whole lot of other things I'm going to show you. I'm just saying, why is it going to prove? Right, it's just water. Why are you freaking out? I'm not freaking out. I'm not freaking out. Notice the woman's leading him. So she's the boss. Little spirit of Jezebel there. Okay, I'm freaking out a little bit. You're going to be fine. We fully accept Jesus Christ. for this moment since I first met you. Have you decided? Uh, um, I, I, I don't know. You want to decide right now? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And pray with me. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. 
that you are the savior of the world. You are the savior of the world. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I repent for my sins. I repent for all my sins. And I accept you as my Which Lonnie Frisbee never did, by the way. And then they're using the chosen Jesus dude for this movie, right? Uh-huh. My Lord and Savior, my God and friend. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, my God and my friend. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. Hey, if anybody wants to baptize you and they take their shirt off, run. Just run. Get away from them. If some screwball takes his shirt off and wants to baptize you, get away from him. With the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, there you go. So. Now, who in the world is Lonnie Frisbee? Lonnie Frisbee was part of an entire movement. So we're going to just read his bio. That's the same fake Jesus, dude. That's him. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Let's go back in time. Hippie Jesus people time. Lonnie Ray Frisbee. Was an American charismatic evangelist and self-described seeing prophet in the late 1960s and 70s. He maintained a hippie appearance. He was notable as a minister and an evangelist in the Jesus movement. Well, we're going to show you the Jesus movement. Eyewitness accounts of his ministry documented in the 2007 documentary Frisbee, The Life and Death of a Hippie Preacher explains how Frisbee became the charismatic spark igniting the rise of Chuck Smith and Calvary Chapel and the Vineyard Movement. Both charismatic little antichrist movements. Both built on a bunch of, a bunch of druggies. and satanic psyop. The life and death of a hippie preacher explains how Frisbee became the charismatic spark igniting the rise of Chuck Smith's Calvary Chapel and the Vineyard Movement. Two worldwide denominations and among the largest evangelical denominations to emerge from the period. It was said that he was not one of the he was not one of the hippie preachers but rather there was one, Frisbee. The term power evangelism comes from Pr Frisbee's ministry. Later, he, could, he would be harshly criticized for his intense focus and heavy concentration on the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, often by individuals in the same church he co-founded. Frisbee also influenced many prophetic evangelists like Jonathan Land, Mark DuPont, Jill Austin, and others. Frisbee's co-founded the House of Miracles com commune, little hippie commune and was its main architect, converting many. The House of Miracles grew into a series of 19 communal houses and later migrated to Oregon from the Shiloh Youth Revival Centers, the largest and one of the longest lasting of the Jesus People communal groups. Frisbee functioned as an evangelical preacher, which also privately socialized as a gay man. So he played evangelist by, by day, and by night, he was a raging sodomite that never repented. Although he stated in interviews that he never believed homosexuality was anything other than a sin in the eyes of God. Both of the denominations he helped to found prohibited homosexual behavior, and he was later excommunicated by the denominations because of his active sexual life. 
First removing him from leadership positions and then ultimately firing him. He was shunned and written out of the official histories. As part of his ostracism from his former churches, his work was diminished, ignored, and maligned. Frisbee died of AIDS in 1993. This guy, you're going to see that this guy was the original Neutner. He was the original Neutner. Hippie Neutner. That's who he was. Biggest scam. One of the biggest scams from the federal government ever, ever done. Now, you're going to say, oh, well, how do you have any proof that is? Well, I'm going to show you the proof that I have. You can believe it or not. Propaganda. Frisbee was raised in a single parent home, was exposed to sketchy and dangerous characters. Uh, he said he was raped when he was a child. Unfortunately. Frisbee showed great interest in arts and cooking. He won awards for his paintings. This is his early life. Uh, at the age of 15. He entered the Laguna Beach gay underground scene with a friend. His spotty high school education left him barely able to read and write. At 18, he joined thousands of other flower children and hippies for the Summer of Love in San Francisco. He described himself as a nudist vegetarian hippie. Frisbee's unofficial evangelism career began as part of a soul-searching, listen, LSD acid trip. As part of a regular tune-on, tune-in, drop-out session. Well, who in the world started those? Timothy Leary. Wait, what? The father of acid? Timothy Leary started in the tune-on, tune-in, and drop-out? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Wait, so Lonnie Frisbee was recruited by Timothy Leary? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Well, who is he working for? Well, I don't know. Who do you think got him into the prisons to run experiments on prisoners? You'll figure it out, but we'll show you. I'll connect the dots for you. He would often read the Bible while tripping. On one pilgrimage with friends to Taquitz Canyon outside Palm Springs, instead of looking for meaning again in mysticism and the occult, Frisbee started reading the Gospel of John to the group, eventually leading the group to Tokwitz Falls and baptizing them. So, so Lonnie Frisbee's tripping on acid, reading the book of John, and baptizes all these people. Gotcha. Traded one book for another book, and just started baptizing people. Tripping his guts out on acid. Gotcha. Okay. A later acid trip in the same area produced a vision of a vast sea of people crying out to the Lord for salvation. Now, let me tell you something, friend. When I was a lost man, I tripped. When I was a lost man, I got high. I did drugs. I ran around. I partied.
Do you understand that this dude is tripping and he's seeing the, the visions? So where does he feel comfortable at? Well, of course, a Pentecostal and a charismatic church. Right? Where's he going to go? Well, where would you go if you were tripping your brains out, Holmes? I'll tell you where I'd go, S.A. I'd go to a Pentecostal church. That's where I'd go if I was tripping my guts out, wouldn't you? I'd go to them Pentecostals, those fake people, those fake Christians. I'd go see visions with all of them. I'd go hang out with the charismatics and see pink elephants. Right? That's where I'd head. If I was tripping my guts out, I'd see visions of all kinds of things, wouldn't I? Man, who are you fooling? Really? Do you people think that born-again Christians that got saved from a life of hell are this stupid? Seriously. Do you think we're this stupid? Got saved from a life of fornication, a life of drug abuse, a life of alcohol, a life of tripping my brains out, a life of... And you going to tell me this dude right here? You're going to fall for this jackass right here? Really? It's just unbelievable to me. It is absolutely unbelievable to me. The guy never stopped being a sodomite. He never stopped doing what he was doing. And you're telling me this is of the Lord? Tripping? Okay. Frisbee started reading the Gospel of John. I saw a golden rooster, Paul. That's what I saw. <laughs> I saw a golden rooster. That's what I saw. Paul remembers that story from many years ago. <laughs> okay. A later acid trip in the same area. See... This is, do you think I'm going to get this finished today? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. A later acid trip in the same area produced a vision of a vast sea of people crying out to the Lord for salvation with Frisbee in front preaching the gospel. His grand vision of spreading Christianity to the masses alienated his family and friends. Frisbee left for San Francisco, where he had won a fellowship to the San Francisco Art Academy. He soon met members at Hate Ashbury's Living Room Mission. At the time, he talked about UFOs, practiced hypnotism, and talked about dabbling in occultism and mysticism. When Christian missionaries first met him, they said he was talking about Jesus and flying saucers. Frisbee converted to Christianity and joined the first street Christian community. The Living Room, a storefront coffee house commune. He quit the Art Academy and moved to Novato, California to set up a commune and later reconnected with his former girlfriend, Connie Bremer, whom he then married. The community was soon dubbed the House of Acts after the community of early Christians in the Acts of the Apostles. Frisbee designed a sign to put outside the house, but was informed that if he gave it an official name, it would no longer be considered a mere guest house and would be subject to renovations. The community took the sign down to avoid the financial obligation. Frisbee continued painting detail oil 
paintings. In comes, in comes Chuck Smith. So Chuck Smith has been making plans to build a had been making plans to build a chapel out of a surplus school building in Santa Ana near Costa Mesa. When he met Frisbee, Smith's daughter's boyfriend John was a former addict who had turned to Christianity. When Smith said he wanted to meet a hippie, John brought home Frisbee. Who was hitchhiking so he could meet people to talk about Jesus and salvation and, you know, trip on some acid. And Frisbee and his wife, Connie, joined the fledgling Calvary Chapel congregation, and Smith was struck by Frisbee's charisma. Smith said, I was not at all prepared for the love that this man would radiate. I was not at all prepared for the love that this man would radiate. The absolute love. Yeah, I bet you weren't. I bet you weren't, Chucky. Your boy's a homo. I bet you weren't ready for the love that he was emanating. <laughs> you got to be careful about that love that boy was emanating, emulating. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I know, I'm being mean. This is why only 60 people are on here. This is why. If I was nicer like those other boys, more people would like me. You're not prepared for the love. Here we go. So the love that boy was radiating, old Chucky wasn't ready for. Frisbee became one of the most important ministers in the church. I bet he did. Tripping on acid, everybody likes him. Hey, who don't like a guy tripping on acid, huh? I mean, let the guy in, tripping on acid. Acid revivals, I can see it now. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Acid revivals. Hey, why not? What's wrong with that? So Frisbee became one of the most important members of the church when on May 17th, 1968, Smith put the young couple in charge of the Costa Mesa rehab called the House of Miracles with John Higgins and his wife, Jackie. Within a week, it had grown to 35 new converts. Bunk beds were built up in the garage to house all the new converts. Frisbee led the charismatic Pentecostal style, caused some disagreement within the church since he seemed focused more on gaining converts than experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit. Then on teaching new converts Bible doctrine, Chuck Smith took up that job and welcomed Frisbee into his church. Frisbee's appearance helped appeal to hippies. That's right and those interested in the youth culture. And Frisbee believed the youth culture would play a prominent role in the Christian movement in the United States. Well, he wasn't lying, was he? He weren't, he weren't lying, were he? That's right. The country is being swept. He cited Joel the prophet and remained upbeat despite with young couple saw his unbalanced treatment. As Frisbee was never paid for his work, yet another person was hired full-time as Smith's assistant. The country is being swept with a youth movement with California as one of the epicenters. The counterculture of hippies and surfers hung around the beaches, music, and the resulting dances was the main form of communication. That's right, man. Feel the love, man. Dancing and stuff. Frisbee would walk in the beaches during the day and convert the young people and bring them back to the church for the nightly services. That ain't all he brought them back for. 
The House of Miracles grew into a series of 19 communal houses. That don't scare you at all? Scares me half to death. That later migrated to Oregon from the Shiloh Youth Revival Centers. The largest and one of the longest lasting of the Jesus People communal groups with 100,000 members. I bet. Oh, I beg to differ, Car uh, Terry. I beg to differ. I'm going to show you where some of those boys did end up in IFB churches. Stay tuned. It's going to get interesting. Hang on for the ride. Here we go. This may be the largest Christian communal group in history. I bet it was. From 1968 to 1971, Frisbee was a leader in the Jesus movement, bringing in thousands of new converts, influencing Calvary Chapel. Oh, and look, Greg Laurie, that compromised the little devil, whom he mentored. Makes sense. Jesus freaks or Jesus people, as they are often called. Oh, look were documented in media, including Catherine Kuhlman. Well, remember old crazy Catherine? Remember her? Well, she interviewed Lonnie. Hey, man, are you guys ready to go back, man, in time? Let's do it, man. Let's go back. Let's go back to where you can really see the roots of Pentecostalism, man. And you can really see how these are all a bunch of witches. And if you're a Pentecostal, you ought to repent, man. Because you're following a bunch of devil-possessed stoners, man. One of the young men, Catherine, who has been so used of God is Lonnie Frisbee. And I wonder if Lonnie could just share with us some now. Well, the people tell me that I'm trying to look like Jesus. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. I mean, was he tripping right here, you think? Was he like was he like tripping his guts out right here? Right? Is that what he was doing? Was he like just like totally tripping? Crazy? Crazy tripping right here, man. <laughs> they say I'm like Jesus, man. Man, they say I look like Jesus, man. This guy, it's just nonsense. And yes, I, by the way, if you're asking me, do I enjoy making fun of it? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. I'm trying to look like Jesus. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, he changed my life. And I, I kind of relate it to like David the psalmist when he says that, Thou hast lifted me up from the dunghill, and he has placed my feet on a solid rock. And Jesus has lifted me up out of a horrible pit. He's washed my, my heart from all the sins and all of the, the evil that... Now, I, I want you to remember, keep this in the back of your mind, that he was an unrepentant homosexual the entire time. Okay? Unrepentant, homosexual, the entire time. Okay, all right. That I had gotten myself into. And since then, I'm all cleaned up now. <laughs> and. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and only. What I, what I like about it is, is that Catherine Kuhlman is as much of a stupid witch as he is. Absolutely, as much as a stupid witch as he is, they're on the same wavelength, man. They're they're on the man. They they're on the same like like they can read each other, man. They they read exactly what each other is saying, man, because they got the same spirit, man. They're both a bunch of rebellious Jezebels that have turned against God, man. They're an absolute bunch of antichrist wicked devils, man. That's who they are. And they and and they all have that spirit. That spirit of antichrist, man. That's what they have. And that's what they're all celebrating, man. That's why you stumble into a Pentecostal church like that, man. 
because they got the same spirit. And they're running with the same mysticism, man. That's what they're doing, man. Okay. I just thought I'd explain that to you, man, if you didn't understand that. All right, Catherine Kuhlman, because she's got more, she snorted more devils than that dude snorted cocaine, man. All right? She's been baptized in devils, man. So she, she speaks the same language as this devil does, man. Since then, I'm all cleaned up now. <laughs> and... Isn't that a wonderful feeling? Yeah. <laughs> and only Jesus could have done it. That's right. He's, he's, give, he's given me a message in my heart. And that, that's a message. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believes not shall be damned. And he, and he said in his word to me, I would receive power after that the Holy Ghost would come upon me. And I waited upon the Lord, and the Holy Ghost came upon me, all right. <laughs> yeah, I got it down to the tips of my toes. And, and so the message is that these are the last days, and that Jesus Christ is returning really soon. And the prophet Joel and the prophet Peter said that in the last days, that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh and that his sons and daughters would prophesy, and that his servants and handmaidens would speak forth the anointed word of God. I'm a servant of God, and I'm a child of God, and God is raising up from the very bottom, and he's raising up the, the foolish and what the world considers That's dumb, right. yeah. and he's, he's putting his spirit upon them, and he's anointing them, and they're starting to preach the gospel, and thousands of people are starting to get saved everywhere and so it's thrilling it sure is <laughs> and so because these are the last it's thrilling it sure is bad last days god has chosen himself some prophets and the church for so long has been expecting a certain mold of, of what a christian should look like or what a christian should be or what a christian should say and but they just needed some acid and they would have understood it better. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you you really have to be a real idiot to fall for this. I just I can't even imagine. And, oh Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, back to back to Mc uh no, I mean uh Catherine Kuhlman. She's gonna hit him with the Neutner pretty soon. God is blowing everybody's mind. <laughs> because he's saving he's saving the the hippies. And nobody thought a hippie could be saved. <laughs> and so he's pulled us up, he's given us the message. We're going forth and proclaiming the good news. Jesus is coming back. Repent and turn to the Lord and save yourselves from this evil generation because he comes to judge the quick and the dead. How has he changed your life, Lonnie? Well, the Lord Watch how he doesn't really answer this. The Lord says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away and behold, all things become new. He's changed me all around. Really? Inside out. Through and through. <laughs> and the things you once loved, you have no desire for at all, right? Just went right out. And he says, I'll take your stony heart of unbelief. And I'll he never stopped. He never stopped being a homosexual. Do you understand? He never stopped being a homosexual. And I'll put a new heart within you and place my spirit within you, too. And so everything changes. He says, I'll become a well of living water gushing forth from within you. And that well of living water gets out everything else. And the new birth experience is real. Sure is. <laughs> it's the most real thing in the world. He's really, really real. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you know what Lonnie's talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's really, really, really real. Oh, 
Okay. Well, that's Catherine Kuhlman put her uh, stamp of approval on it. Right? Catherine Kuhlman put her stamp of approval on it. Let's get back to Lonnie Frisbee. Okay. So we have the we have the uh, Catherine Kuhlman I Believe in Miracles show where Frisbee was featured as a guest talking about Jesus, prophets, and quoting scripture. By 1971, the Jesus movement had broken the media with major media outlets such as Life, Newsweek, and Rolling Stone covering it. Really? When's the last time they covered a gospel preaching pastor that was preaching the word of God all over the country and uh, and reproving and rebuking of sin. No, nah, but the LSD movement gets a good. The LSD Christian movement, man. That gets a, it's a good experience. That gets some good exposure, man. Okay. In 1973, the Frisbees divorced because... Frisbee's pastor had an affair with his wife. Frisbee mentions this in a sermon he gave in the Vineyard Church in Denver, Colorado, a few years before he died. Connie later remarried. Uh, Lonnie left the organization. Meanwhile, in 1977, John Wimber was laying the groundwork for the Vineyard movement, right? Right? Since his early days at Calvary Chapel, Frisbee. I want you, I want you to notice something here. Let's go. We're 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 covering Frisbee now. We'll get to we'll get to Leary. Okay, we'll get to him. He began teaching and preaching about spiritual gifts and healing, but Wimber held that it was wasn't until May of 1979. Listen, when Frisbee gave his testimony during an evening service at what was then the Yorba Linda branch of the Calvary Church movement, later the Anaheim Vineyard Christian Fellowship, that the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit took hold on the church. Ah. So in other words, Frisbee came over to the Vineyard Movement, started the Vineyard Movement. He was the wizard that gave out the mojo to get the magic. To get the stuff, he called it. Since his early days at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, Frisbee had made a shift in his emphasis from evangelism to the dramatic and demonstrative ma manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. After speaking, Frisbee invited all the young people 25 and under to come forward and invited the Holy Spirit to bring God's power in their lives. Witnesses say it looked like a battlefield as young people, as young people fell and began to shake and speak in tongues. Okay, Kenny Mack says, you just sound, this is from our comment section here. You just sound like an angry unbeliever to me. To be fair, this is the very first time I've heard you. If I were searching for truth and came here, I'd turn away. You would? Well, maybe you should listen because things that aren't agreeable to your flesh might just help your spiritual walk, and maybe you won't be deceived by a bunch of false devil sodomites that are running around passing out noitners to everybody. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you should not speak and you should listen, and that would help you. Okay. So look at this. The young kids, many in junior high and high school, were so filled with the Spirit that they soon started baptizing friends in hot tubs and swimming pools around town. The church catapulted in growth over the next few months, and the event is credited with launching the Vineyard Movement. After this time, Frisbee and Wimber began traveling the world, visiting South Africa and Europe. Frisbee was a much sought-after preacher with his Jesus-like look, getting him instant recognition from South Africa to Denmark. While there, they performed many healings and miracles for people. As reported by many who were there, Frisbee was integral in the development of what later would be Wimber's Signs and Wonders theology.
Aw, Kenny Max says, see, you're just angry. No problem, bud. Have a good angry life. Aw. I feel so bad now. I'm so absolutely crushed by your words. I think I'll just quit and give up on everything and walk away. I think I'll just stop preaching. I think I'll just stop lifting up my voice and warning people. I think I'll just turn into an effeminate person that limps my wrist in the corner because of your your terrible rebuke that reached down into the depths of my soul and makes me want to quit doing everything that I've ever done because I'm not a nicey wicey guy like you are. Just kidding. I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll keep going and warn people. And you keep doing what you're doing. Nothing. Thank you. Okay. So next... Sexuality revealed, although Frisbee's homosexuality was documented as a bit of an open secret in the church community. Wait, stop. Hey, you mean all these Pentecostals and Charismatics knew their, their main evangelist was a homo? You mean, you mean they all knew that their boy was batting for the other team? You mean, or batting for the same team? You mean, they all knew that their little hippie, LSD-hitting, CIA-operative homosexual dude was, was, hom was fruity? You mean, they, they knew their boy ate fruity pebbles? You mean, really? You mean... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they knew it. Like, they all knew it. That's kind of weird. Not really. Not when you understand the spirit of charismania. Not when you understand the charismatics. It's not weird at all. How about the little CIA op that I covered years ago, Paul Kane? Remember him? Remember that guy? Let's see if I can find it. Ah, it'll be easier to find on Sermon Audio. Hang on. Man, you're no fun, Pastor Cooley. You just like to tell the truth about that kind of stuff. What's the matter with you anyway doing that? Here's another reason why I could never be a Pentecostal. You ready for it? Okay, here it is. Number one, I'm not gay enough. I'm not gay at all. <laughs> uh, you got to be a fruit to be a Pentecostal, I think. Uh, a, a Pentecostal evangelist, that is. That's not very nice. Okay, here you go. CIA PSYOP, Charismatic Paul Kane Remote Viewing Operation Stargate. Man, that's weird. See that? Oh, that's weird. So you, are you saying that Paul Kane was working for the government? Yeah. Yeah, he he was. Okay. Although Frisbee's homosexuality was documented as a bit of an open secret in the church community and that he would party on Saturday night, then preach on Sunday morning. Many in the church were unaware of his other life. Eventually, some church officials felt that Frisbee's inability to overcome what the church considered to be sexual immorality. What the church considered? How about what the Bible says? How about what the Word of God says? 
How about the rule of our, the, 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 the final authority that we have? What does the final authority say? They don't care. An article in the Orange County Weekly headline, The First Jesus Freak chronicles Frisbee's life in which Matt Coker writes, Chuck Smith Jr. says he was having lunch with Wimber one day when he asked how the pastor reconciled working with a known homosexual like Frisbee. Wimber asked how the younger Smith knew this. Smith said he'd received a call from a pastor who'd just heard a young man confess to him having been a six-month relationship with Frisbee. Wimber called Smith the next day to say he'd confronted Frisbee, who openly admitted to the affair and agreed to leave. The affair? You mean he agreed? He admitted that he was an unrepentant, raging sodomite? And he's the one giving you all the anointing? Huh. Well, that's kind of weird. That's weird, that guy's a queer. Not really. Not that weird. Not that strange. Okay. So here we go. In 2005, film critic Peter Chataway interviewed David D. Sabatino. Uh, and he said this, I brought to light some things that not a lot of people knew. I've been in rooms with his family where I've had to tell them that he defined himself as gay way back. Nobody knew that. There's a lot of hubris into that to come to people who loved him and prayed for him and, and to stand there and say, you didn't really know this, but... In the same interview, D. Sabatano also stated his early testimony at Calvary Chapel was that he had come out of the homosexual lifestyle, but he felt like a leper because a lot of the people turned away from him after that. So he took it out of his testimony and thinks that that is an indictment of the church. Okay. So Frisbee contacted, contracted AIDS and died from complications associated with the condition in 1993. Obituaries at the time cited a brain tumor as his cause of death. At the funeral at the Crystal Cathedral, Calvary Chapel's Chuck Smith eulogized Frisbee as a spiritual son and said he was a Samson-like figure that being a man through whom God did many works but was the victim of his own struggles and temptations. Let's see. Now, see, there's another avenue of this that is very important, and that's the history of the music, and David Cloud covers that. Um, but we're gonna get to we're gonna get to this side of it, then we're gonna get to the CIA side of it, and uh, we'll keep going. We got an hour to go here, and we'll see how far we get. Okay. Here we go. Let me see here. Hang on a second. All right, LSD and the baptisms of Hakwitz Canyon. 50 years ago, Lonnie Frisbee took LSD and wandered into Hakwitz Canyon naked. He returned a born-again Christian. Okay, stop. 
How does somebody become a born again Christian? On acid? Tripping? The gospel is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again from the dead. The gospel is repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Okay, so 50 years ago, Lonnie Frisbee took LSD and wandered into the canyon. He returned a born-again Christian. While in the canyon, Lonnie had a vision of hundreds of thousands of people being baptized in the Pacific Ocean. And he felt a voice in his spirit tell him that he had been selected by God to become a modern prophet for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, well, this sounds like Joseph Smith. This sounds like every other Pentecostal prophet that I've seen. Right? Within two years, Lonnie was baptizing hundreds of people a day on the beaches of South California. He could go. He would go on to be a key participant in the birth of dramatic growth of what time called the Jesus Movement and two very large charismatic churches, Calvary Chapel and the Vineyard. According to Kahula legend, listen to this about this canyon. From Takwitz Canyon was held spiritual significance for thousands of years. It is the prison of the first shaman created by Mukat, the creator of all things. After being scorned by a woman, Takwitz turned against humanity and was exiled at the canyon forever. He is said to be the father of all shamans. During the 1960s, in a sort of spiritual gentrification, it became a popular destination for hippies and spiritual seekers who wanted to go in the desert to get high and have orgies. Ah. Lonnie was a natural evangelist. If he found truth, he shared it. He was captivated by Harvard professor Timothy Leary's writing. Really? The little CIA op, the little Timothy Leary government op. You think the government let... You think that that he broke out of prison on his own? When the government can hear a bat poop in the woods 300 miles away, you're telling me that guy broke out of prison with the help of the Weather Underground, which is also connected to the CIA and every other single operation that's out there today. He was captivated by Harvard, Harvard professor Timothy Leary's writings and regularly organized turn on, tune in, and drop out. Timothy Leary's writings, right? Uh, let's see. Sessions in the canyon to introduce his friends to LSD and peyote. Oh, really? But psychedelics were not just for spacing out. And Lonnie was a believer in Leary's claim that psychedelics can facilitate a confrontation with one's true self. Leary also advised using music, spiritual text, or holy places to help direct that confrontation. Lonnie would often bring along spiritual texts to the canyon and read them aloud while he and his friends... Before his own conversion, he led a group to the fort to the foot of the 60-foot waterfall in the canyon. After getting high and painting an enormous image of Jesus on a nearby rock, Lonnie read from the Gospel of John and implored the acolytes of Timothy Leary to become disciples of Jesus Christ. In what might be the most unorthodox baptism in history, a stoned, unordained, and unbelieving priest baptized several couples at the base of Takwit's eternal prison. In 1967 episode of Firing Line, Timothy Leary attempted to clarify the impact and to, and, and to justify the use of psychedelics to William Buckley Jr.
He claimed that psychedelics were not just another form of escapism. It's like a microscope, Leary said. LSD does not draw you away from the essential elements of your existence, but turns them into a searing coal and presses them against your lips, just as the seraph impressed the coal of the Lord against Isaiah's lips in the throne room of heaven. Are you following me? Are you listening here? Leary told Buckley that LSD would provide a path through the confusions of modern society by focusing the mind of the user on what is truly real. Second-class mystics. At about the same time that Lonnie was baptizing hippies in the Pacific, Jim Bell was attending a college of the Holy Cross in Worcester. Worcester, Paul. In Worcester. Massachusetts and preaching Be Here Now gospel at Baba Ram Das. Okay. There you go. Over the next few months, Jim struggled to blend Christian love with Buddhist wisdom. But ultimately, he settled into a Pentecostal church. I love it. I love it. Look what their words say. Over the next few months, Jim struggled to blend Christian love and Buddhist wisdom. But ultimately, he settled into a Pentecostal church made up of a lot of people with similar experiences to his own. Sounds legit. Sounds legit. People have said, you saw Jesus on drugs, so it's illegitimate. In an interview, Jim told me, well, it is illegitimate. I could have seen Buddha or anything, but I saw Jesus. God was using the vision to speak to me. Ah. Okay. So anyway, we won't go on to and read much more of this article, but there you go. So... Well, that's interesting. It's almost like this stuff was kind of planned a little bit. Like, like the Asbury revival was planned and how like the same people that funded He Gets Us funded the Asbury revival. Whoa. No way. Yeah, way. 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 Okay. Now we're going to get into the Jesus people. I think I might get this finished today. I know. I mean. Somebody's got to do it. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Antipas, a CIA front. A previous watch under prayer reports have documented that certain discernment ministries with definitive connections to the British Israeli are leading Christians into Hebrew Roots Movement, a British Israeli construct that aligns the Kabbalistic doctrines of Judeo Freemasonry. Not a few of these discernment leaders also belong to the Jesus Movement of the late 1960s and 70s. These former Jesus people turned discernment leaders have retained their contempt for the church and an attitude which characterized the Jesus Movement in general and have made a career of denigrating Protestantism in its entirety. Now, some of their numbers are calling for another Jesus revolution. With broad strokes, the discernment... Okay, so we're going to skip ahead. Stephen Shear of Antipas opens his appeal for another Jesus revolution, right? So he's talking about a Jesus revolution. With broad strokes discernment, organizations like Antipas portray the entire evangelical church as a materialistic, sterile institute. Okay. Stephen Shear of Antipas opens his appeal for another Jesus revolution with a quote from a radical Baudry folk singer, Pete Seeger. 
who has been a member of the Communist Party from 1942 to 50 and was in the front of the civil rights anti-war movement of the 60s, although Shearer admits that the Jesus Revolution deteriorated into a debauched horde, no different than that which he claims compromised the established church. Okay. Now let me get to the part that I'm... Here we go. Here we go. We'll skip down so we don't read all of it. Okay, let's go here. They want another Jesus movement, Jesus revolution movement to break out. That's why they got the little PSYOP movie with their little Hollywood actors, Kelsey Grammer, all the fake Christians. They got the Roman Catholic uh, fake Jesus guy to play Lonnie Frisbee. And, uh, oh, they're getting the band back together, it sounds like. According to Antipas Mirror site, the Institute for the Study of Religion and Politics, Editor Stephen Shearer was an earlier leader of the Je Jesus movement in the 1960s. Listen, he was also involved in counterintelligence. He was a captain in the U.S. Army intelligence and served with distinction in Vietnam, earning three combat campaign medals and the Bronze Star. He returned from Vietnam and served as the executive officer for Region one, U.S. counterintelligence for Northern California and Western Nevada. He was an early leader in the Jesus movement of the 1960s in Northern California and later started Jesus people-type churches in Washington, D.C., Sacramento, and Denver. The Antipas papers written in 1996, written by S.R. Shearer, identified his intelligence assignments during the years of the Jesus movement. From 1967 to 72, he served as an intelligence officer in Europe, in Vietnam, 525 intelligence groups, the United States 515 counterintelligence group. In 1972, he reassigned his commission and left the army to become a co-pastor for a Jesus people type church in Washington, D.C., which was dedicated to the preaching of the gospel to the street people in Georgetown. Well, huh, that ain't, if that ain't weird, now if that ain't something, what in the world is you talking about? Them's real hippie Jesus people. Yeah. The February 1997 issue of Religion and Politics features S.R. Shear's article, The Death Squads, bringing in the kingdom of God through terror, torture, and death. With the introduction, the author of this article was involved in the Phoenix program. As an instructor in the program, in-country, training center at Vung Tau, South Vietnam. A footnote states that the source of the information, Shear, like his colleague, Dean McGriff, was trained at Fort Holabird, MD, prior to becoming an instructor for Operation Phoenix in Vietnam. Mr. McGriff, oh, Dean McGriff acknowledges a nearly identical joint career in military intelligence and the Jesus Revolution. Well, if that ain't something. Mr. McGriff, not to be confused with Mr. McDuck, Mr. McGriff was a captain in military intelligence in the 1960s. You don't say. By 1963... Dene was disillusioned with Christianity and the lack of reality of the Lord in his life. At this point of wanting to give up, Dene was caught up in the Jesus Revolution in 1963, followed by seven glorious years of experiencing a dynamic, unstructured body life and evangelism. In 1970, at the height of Vietnam War, he entered the Army and military intelligence as a first lieutenant and went through the intelligence school in Baltimore. In six months, he was prompted. He was promoted to captain and stayed on for the balance of his time of his, as an instructor at the Army Intelligence School. In other words, during the same period, Dean McGriff and Stephen Shearer of Antipas were involved in the Jesus Revolution. They were also intelligence agents. Huh. 
Antipas Publications in Religion and Politics, edited by Stephen Shear, reveals the CIA contracted with Eli Lilly to produce the hallucinogenic drugs, which in turn produced a generation of drug-addicted social and spiritual dropouts. Hold the phone. Wait a minute now. Hold the phone here. Are you saying the very people that had a war on drugs actually produced the drugs and then started a war on them drugs? So then, them, them boys were working both sides? No, I'm not saying it. They say it. I'm just repeating it. Wait. Now, are you saying that, like, we left them billions of dollars of uh, stuff over there in Afghanistan, like hundreds of billions of dollars worth of equipment over there, so one day them old boys could start a war with us again, and we could go over there and fight them again? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hmm? Because nobody is dumb enough to believe to leave hundreds of billions of dollars worth of material or worth of a whole base and everything over there for that. Wait, are you saying that they they released acid from a laboratory? You mean kind of like them boys release at Culver's? Kind of like they release Culver's from a lab. You know that Culver's? When you go eat Culver's? They release Culver's from a lab? Culver's? Yeah. Like my dad calls it. Culver's. Culver's 19. Yeah, Culver's. You know. Culver's 19, like my dad calls it. Call it Culver's. You know, I'm starting to believe, like, we're being set up here. I mean, what's the matter with you anyway? You need to be waving your flag around and, and putting your hand over your heart and stuff. America and hot dogs and fireworks. Oh, and fentanyl and <laughs> acid. Well, how come I'm not proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the acid they gave me that made me trip like trees and I proudly stand up hitting acid and defend her still today. See why I'm like disillusioned? Yeah, see, what, like, what's the matter with you? You're just so mean. What's wrong with you anyway? What, like, what's the matter with you? Why do you talk like that and stuff? Why, why do you do that and stuff? Why don't you like Trump and stuff? Like, what's the matter with you? Because I'm not stupid, that's why. Okay? I'm not stupid. I actually do study things by the grace of God. I actually look at stuff. I actually read. I actually look at it. That's why. And that makes people mad. That makes them angry. Why? Because you just show it. Look, wait. Now, I'm going to read this to you again, okay? Okay, you ready? Antipas Publications, Religion and Politics, edited by Stephen Shear, reveals that the CIA contracted with Eli Lilly to produce the hallucinogenic drugs, which in turn produced a generation of drug-addicted social and spiritual dropouts. Evangelicals are making a big mistake in believing that the outbreak of acid on the nation's campuses in the early 1960s can be explained away simply as a result of the hippie culture of that era. They have it backwards. It wasn't the hippie culture that created acid. 
It was rather the government that produced it, which in turn generated the drug culture, which led finally to the rise of the so-called hippiedom. That's what really happened. The fact is that the LSD that Allen Ginsberg and Timothy Leary used to introduce a generation of students to drugs was produced in laboratories of the Eli Lilly Company under contract to the CIA. You know, Pastor, I don't like you very much. You're always just so mean. All you do is just talk mean. You're just mean. What's the matter with you? You don't like Christians hitting acid. You don't like, you, you got a problem with Christians tripping on acid. You got a problem with them speaking in like 400 different fake languages that don't exist, babbling their tongues around. I mean, how come you got to be so mean and stuff? Why can't you be like nice like them other preachers that people like to listen to? Why don't you just be nice like them? Why do you got to tell people that stuff anyway? I don't know. Here we go. You ready? Did the same CIA which gave us the hippie movement, the drug culture, also produce the Jesus Revolution? Nah. Man, now listen. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hang on. All right, guys. Hang on a second. Let, time out. Time out. Hold the phone. Let's 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 pause for a second, okay? Let's pause. Pause. Time out. Huddle. Ready? Time out. Huddle. I mean, where would you ever get the idea that a government of the world? would put together a fake antichrist religion and get the whole world to worship another Jesus. Where would you get that idea? Hey, I'll show you. I got it from the Bible. Wait, you mean like there's, there's something in the Bible where like all the world wandered after the beast and started worshiping a false Christ, a counterfeit Christ, and and there was like sorcery and stuff mixed in there and all that other stuff? Yeah. Where would they get an idea for that at? From Satan. Because the end times government is forming. And these are all just precursors. All these fake Jesuses they're putting up now. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Okay, we won't go into that. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him who's not, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. He exercised with all the power of the first beast before him.
And he caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of the beast. And he deceived, a uh, sight of men, excuse me, and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which has the wound, had the wound by the sword and did live and power to give life unto the image of the beast. So here we have it, friends. You ready? And he causes all, so they make the image of the beast and life is given to the image of the beast. That's the governments of the world that do that. They put it together. Okay, here we go. So here's the question. Did the CIA, which gave us the hippie movement and drug culture, also produce the Jesus Revolution? In testing the fruit of the vineyard, former Jesus person John Goodwin asserts the hallucinogenic drugs in Eastern mysticism were brought into the Jesus movement by hippie converts. In the mid to late 1960s, there were profound changes taking place in America, changes to our social, political, and spiritual institutions. Relativism was the moral philosophical du jour. Consciousness was being expanded and raised by the use of hallucinogenic drugs and forays into the occult and Eastern mysticism. This attitude of experimentation was transferred to the church as many of the young Jesus people came from the counterculture and brought with them many of the drugs and Eastern mystic induced revelations with them. These things I know with certainty because I was one of these counterculture Jesus people. The flamboyant leader of the Jesus revolution, Lonnie Frisbee was involved with the use of hallucinogenic drugs was a divorced bisexual who died of AIDS. The stories are legion and is buried at the Crystal Cathedral. During his funeral at the venue, Frisbee was eulogized as a Samson figure. By the way, the reference here is probably to Samson's Nazarite vocation, which was a significance in esoteric belief systems as previously discussed in the Elijah Revolution. Long before Benny Hinn and Rodney Howard Brown Frisbee was mesmerizing Jesus freaks with the anointing. Lonnie could actually see tongues of fire resting on the heads of those whom the Lord was ministering to, as well as seeing where, what area of the body the Holy Spirit was zeroing in on. If the CIA supplied the drugs used in the hippie cultures and hippies continued after their conversions, to Jesus to traffic in hallucinogenic drugs. Is there a credible source that actually identifies the Jesus revolution as a CIA operation? Found on the Mad Cow website in a short article inside Richard Mellon's Scaife's Conspiracy about an interview in which former news producer Daniel Hopsicker elicited from Pat Matriskina, president of Jeremiah Films and chairman of citizens for honest government and admission that the Jesus revolution was masterminded by the CIA and that he played a major role in this operation. Look closely. I shot it at him, Miss Trinkina. Are you an agency? I meant, of course, was he from the company, the good old bad old CIA? But this is apparently not considered a polite question. Though God knows why not, because before he answered, he coughed and looked surprised. Maybe he just 
not all that used to the direct address. But at the end of the meal, he said to me that for some reason, he told me a lot more than he was planning to. So I guess it was successful tactic. Listen to what he said. I've been to Berkeley too, his reply began. I was detailed to Berkeley in 1965 to establish a countervailing force to Mario Savio's free speech movement. While there, I founded the Campus Crusade for Christ, and then it was his turn to grin. I invented, he told me proudly, Jesus freaks. I was detailed to Berkeley. For anyone who has ever suspected a dark, paranoid moment that our culture, especially in the 60s, was somehow psycho-managed by the CIA, Matriciana's offhand admission is enlightening because it was clear he was in earnest. I had no reason to doubt while, that he was telling me the truth. To me, its implications for the current scandal are staggering because Matriciana, when he made Clinton Chronicles, wasn't an independent producer trolling in anonymity. He was an intelligence operative for Richard Mellon Scaife, himself an intelligence operative with long-standing ties to the CIA. Yeah. Huh. Isn't that something? Costa Mesa Calvary Chapel to become a major movement under the youth of leadership of the late hippie evangelist Lonnie Frisbee. Frisbee, Frisbee, who was an unofficial youth pastor of Chuck Smith's church from 68 to 71, also helped Wimber. We know that information already. Frisbee and other members of the Jesus movement maintained that Joel's prophecy specifically placed youth on the vanguard of the spiritual revolution. By the way, are you seeing some... Do you remember who was only... Who they wanted primarily? Do you remember who they wanted primarily at Asbury? Does anybody remember? They wanted youth primarily at Asbury. Remember? Under 25? Remember the Taze spirituality? The Taze music? Remember? Okay, in the history of the Jesus movement, David Diasabatino stated God supernaturally birthed two large denominations through Lonnie Frisbee, Calvary Chapel and the Vineyard. This was the rise of the signs and wonders movement. The unusual phenomena we see in the current move of God, such as shaking, falling down, and drunkenness in the spirit, characterized the Sunday evening Mother's Day service at Anaheim Vineyard in 1980, which was immediately followed by a tremendous growth for the Vineyard movement, particularly during the time that Frisbee traveled and ministered with John Wimber for 18 months subsequent to that. Are you paying attention, kids? Frisbee's work with John Wimber in 1980 led to the, spirit, to the split between Calvary Chapel and the Vineyard Churches in the early 1980s. Here's an interesting quotation from the tape of Lonnie Frisbee's testimony. I was a nudist vegetarian hippie when the Lord called me. I was going into the desert taking off all my clothes, and I'm saying, God, if you're really real, reveal yourself to me. One afternoon, the whole atmosphere of this canyon started to tingle and change. The Lord identified himself to me and said, I'm Jesus. I build nations, and I tear them down. It is better for a nation to have never known me than, than to have, no, have known me and turned their back from me. I thought all roads led to Rome, but he explained to me that he was the only way to know God. I accepted him, and he said, I'm going to send you to the people. Then he gave me a vision of thousands of people, and they were wandering around in a maze of darkness and no direction on purpose for their lives. He showed me that there was a light on me that he was placing on my life, and that it was Jesus Christ, and I was going to bear the word of the Lord. Do you see this?
All right. It is interesting, isn't it? Okay, this experience seems to have had its fulfillment in certain periods of Frisbee's life, described briefly above, which were incredibly fruitful with respect of numbers. Yeah, I bet. Frisbee's death on March 12, 93, prevented him from seeing the birth of a new move of God in North America, which began in Toronto on January 20th, 1994, as a result of the convergence of the influence of Rodney Howard Brown. Oh, you mean all these marks, little devils? Yeah. The, this concept of power evangelism, which originated with John Wimber Blaine, Let's see. I lost my place. I'm sorry. Uh, summary of manifestations that Wimber instructs people to look for in those being healed. Hot, flash, hot flushes and stiffness in parts, in certain parts of the body. Tingling, sensations, trembling and shaking. Falling down under the power of the spirit. Strong electrical current. Ripples on the skin. Movement under the skin. Radiance on the face, aura reading, heavy breathing, moaning and groaning and being in a trance. In addition, Wimber instructs that the phenomenon on the person ministering healing include sensations of warmth, flowing out of the hands, aura manipulation, tingling feeling, trembling of hands and the sense of anointing. In his video on healing tape one, Wimber says at the same time, I'm gathering information with my five senses. I'm also sending up my antenna into the cosmic reality. There you go. So now, so anyway. Looking at this to see President Eisenhower rejected the recommendation. Blah blah blah. General, Let's see if this anyway. So, I mean, maybe we'll. Charles Fuller founded the Fuller Theological Seminary, one of the key backers of Cameron Townsend's Summer Institute of Linguistics which helped the CIA Rockefeller, CIA Rockefeller multinational corporate enterprise gather anthropological and psychological information to Latin American tribes. I mean, we, these are, McGriff is, again, McGriff's at military counter, man, this article, oh my word, is this loaded. This is loaded. Mm -mm. This article This article is so loaded with information that I almost want to stop right there with it and pick up something else and come back to this because there is more to the story here. Because as I'm looking at this article here, this is loaded with the connections of these people. You know, Fuller Theological Seminary, isn't that where James White went to school? Look at that. Support troops for the Jesus revolution. Oh, my word. Yeah, I'm not prepared to get through all this. Oh, my. I won't be able to finish all this. Who's Barbara? Who's Barbara Aho? I don't know who she is. But I think I'm going to stop with this article and I'm going to pick up another one because there's so much more to this. Oh, she's the one that wrote this article. I'm sorry. I didn't even realize that. I wondered if that's who it was after you said that. Because I'd like to read over this myself. Okay. 
And maybe I'll call it the CIA and the charismatic movement. Shall we do that? And G CIA, charismatic movement, and Jesus people. CIA, Jesus people, charismatic movement. And maybe we'll cover that um, on Wednesday. How about that? How about we do that? Let me show you uh, what David Cloud has with us. Why don't we do that, okay? Because this stuff is just getting... It, it goes deeper down the rabbit hole, and I want to go deeper down it because I love exposing the charismatic movement. There is just something really exhilarating about it uh, for me. So uh, why don't we do that? That will be good, right? Uh, would that get a YouTube strike? Why would it get a YouTube strike? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything wrong. I didn't say anything against their, their platform. Uh, founded in 1971, Maranatha Music was one of the first contemporary Christian. Now, let's look at the Jesus people. You know, we're talking about the PSYOP, right? The CIA, LSD, and all these other things. Now, let's think. I want you to think about along this lines, the contemporary Christian music scene. Also, oh, wait. Wait. Let's get to Timothy Leary, actually. Let's go a little bit to Timothy Leary. We did Lonnie Frisbee, definitely. We got that covered. I I might do the, the charismatic movement. Timothy Leary is the one that, that invented the acid, basically. Uh, was an American psychologist and author known for his strong advocacy of psychedelic drugs. Evaluations of Leary are polarizing, ranging from bold oracle to publicity hound. He was a hero of the American consciousness, according to Allen Ginsberg. As a clinical psychologist, Harvard University, Leary founded Harvard Psil Psilocybian Project after revealing experience with magic mushrooms in Mexico. He led the project from 1960 to 62 testing the therapeutic effects of lysergic uh, and psilocybin, uh, which were legal in the U.S. In the Concord Prison Experiment and the Marsh Chapel Experiment, other Harvard faculty questioned his research scientific legitimacy and, and ethics because of he took psychedelics along with his subjects and was denied and has denied that Leary pressured unwilling students. Harvard fired Leary and his colleague. So Harvard and the CIA are definitely connected, right? We know that. Now, so Leary, uh, he remained in the non-commissioned uh, non officer track while enrolled in psychological subsection of the Army Specialized Training Program, including three-month study at Georgetown University. Oh, really? Really? So he's working at Jesuit Georgetown University, working with the Army Specialized Training Program, psychological subsection of the Army Specialized Training Program, including three months of study at Georgetown University. With limited need for officers late in the war, Leary was briefly assigned as a private first class to the Pacific Warbound Second Combat Cargo Group which he later characterizes as a suicide command whose main mission, as far as I could see, was to eliminate the entire civilian branch of American aviation from post-war rivalry. You starting to see a pattern here? Leary stayed on in the Bay Area and assistant clinical professor of medical psychology at the University of California. So, you know, he conducted these psychedelic experiments and experiences. And he was also part of the, look at this. 
The Concord Prison Experiment evaluated the use of psilocybin and psychotherapy in the in the rehabilitation of released prisoners. 36 prisoners were reported to have repented and sworn off criminality after Leary and his associates guided them through the psychedelic experience. The overall recidivism rate for American prisoners was 60%, whereas the rate of those in Leary's project reportedly dropped to 20. The experimenters in- concluded that long-term reduction in criminal recidivism could be affected with a combined combination of acid group psychotherapy inside the prison. Along with a comprehensive post release follow-up support program modeled on the alcoholics anonymous. So one thing you have to understand Leary was a government asset. Leary was paid to develop in a lab what he developed. Leary was part of the social construct of the nation. Leary was part of the... Leary provided the drugs for the Jesus movement. They were selling the drugs. The Brotherhood of Eternal Love was an organization of drug users and distributors that operated in the mid-1960s. There's some fascinating connections between Timothy Leary, the Brotherhood of Eternal Love, and Lonnie Frisbee. Okay. Now, This Jesus revolution is nothing more than a a made-up movie making them look like they were real Christians. They weren't real Christians. At all, period. Now, so... Calvary Chapel played a major role in the birth of the Jesus People movement. Mesmerized by a charismatic Jesus hippie named Lonnie Frisbee, Chuck Smith baptized massive numbers of hippies who had professed Christ. Many of them led to the Lord by Frisbee by accepting the young people pretty much as they were, even for Christian service. Long hair, immodest clothing, rock and roll, culturally liberal thinking. Calvary Chapel exploded in growth from one small church to a mega church and beyond to a large association of churches. With his long brown hair, long scraggly beard, dusty clothing, scent of Mary Jane, and j- glint of his last LSD trip in his eyes, Frisbee showed up out of nowhere, literally on Chuck Smith's doorstep. Chuck Smith was a licensed minister in the Four Square Pentecostal Church, the denomination founded by female Pentecostal preacher Amy Semple McPherson. See that? Wait, so he's part of Amy Semple McPherson's. Yes. So if you're a Pentecostal, I can tell you you're not right with God. Why? Because a woman founded your movement. A woman leads your movement. A woman founded and leads your movement, and that's unbiblical. And you're in sin, and you're a feminist, and you're following it, and you have a Jezebel spirit, and except you repent, that's the spirit that you have. And you may not even be saved, because if you can't see through the deception of that, then you're probably not a Christian. I'll just be honest with you. I don't see how you could be. You have no discernment. You have zero amount of discernment. Frisbee was commissioned by Smith after his wife, Kay, received a prophecy. 
the Spirit of God came through a prophecy with Kay Smith and said, because of your praise and adoration before my throne tonight, I'm going to bless the whole coast of California. And when we started to receive the word as from God, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon us, and we began to weep, and the Lord began to give people visions of that prophecy. And then the Lord continued on to stay. It was going to move across the United States and then go to different parts of the world. Maranatha music was built upon this unscriptural foundation. In those days, at least, Calvary Chapel was quick to accept the flimsiest profession and wasn't careful to try to ascertain whether the hippies were truly born again. They encouraged the newest babes in Christ, assuming they were even saved, to perform music. Take the members of Love Song, one of the first and most influential of the Calvary Chapel Christian rock bands. Band member Chuck Gerard said this in 97. It was early in 1970. When three of my buddies and I walked into a church called Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa to play some songs for the pastor at the suggestion of the young hippie preacher named Lonnie Frisbee. We were hippies who had turned our lives to the Lord only days before, yet we had a few songs that we had written before we met the Lord, and we were about God and Jesus. The pastor thought the songs were of God, invited us to play in one of the weekly Bible studies, and we accepted the invitation. We didn't know much about what people call gospel music. We were just writing the same kind of songs we'd write if we weren't Christians. But now we had Jesus to sing about. Note the members of the love song started out by playing songs they had written before they were converted. The hippies should have been discipled and biblically trained, but they were allowed to minister to the churches through music. They should have been grounded in sound doctrine and taught Bible. But they weren't. Lonnie Frisbee further, further illustrates the frightful, shallow nature of many of the Jesus people conversions that form the foundation of the contemporary praise music movement. Frisbee turned to Jesus through the LSD trips and began to receive prophecies while high on drugs. On his own authority, the teenage Frisbee baptized a group of drugged-up hippies in Taquiz Falls after reading the Gospel John to them and painting a picture of Jesus on the rocks. Later in the same place, while on an acid trip, he had a vision that God had called him to preach the Gospel. In a video documentary, Frisbee, David De Sabato observed that many of the Jesus people's conversion involved drugs. One of the ironic twists of the 60s was the mainly openly stated that drugs, LSD in particular, played a large part of their experience in Christian salvation. So they were tripping on LSD. Sandy Hefner, Hefner, for example, describes her salvation like this. I took my LSD laid on the floor a couple of hours, and when I could get, uh, get together to get up, I got up as a Christian. It's just that simple. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, come again? You're saying that you tripped your guts out, you're sitting on the floor, you got up and you were a Christian. Well, methinks you got devils. That's not biblical salvation. Biblical salvation is repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not some high feeling. It's not some feeling in my guts. It's not some feeling in my fingers. It's not some feeling in my heart. It's Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again from the dead according to the scriptures. But I must repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Frisbee was not only using hallucinant drugs, but was still living a homosexual lifestyle. 
practicing hypnotism and dabbling in various occultic and mystical practices. The Sun Worshippers video documentary edited, edited by Bob Cording and Weldon Hardenbrook. In this condition, Frisbee joined a Jesus People commune in 1967. He never had a clear new birth conversion that involved a definite understanding of the gospel and clear repentance and faith. He never gave up homosexuality and partying. Even after he joined Calvary Chapel, he would party on Saturday night and preach on Sunday. He would go out and boogie down. It was alleged that Frisbee's ministry was accompanied by signs and wonders, but the devil can do miracles, and when measured by the standard of Scripture, Frisbee's ministry was dangerously heretical. Even so, Chuck Smith put Frisbee in charge of a Wednesday night Bible study, which soon attracted thousands. Frisbee had no spiritual discernment. It is evident in that he appeared with false prophetess Catherine Kuhlman. Yep. Claimed he had the baptism of the Holy Spirit when he was still living the homo lifestyle. Frisbee was divorced in 1973. His wife said this. At the end of the marriage, he told me that he had been st staying late in some gay bars. With John Wimber and the Vineyard Movement in 1980, Lonnie Frisbee became associated with John Wimber who was seeking to establish the Signs and Wonders ministry. Listen to this. Instead of looking at his Bible, look what he did. At the Yorba Linda branch at Calvary Chapels, Wimber called miracles doing the stuff. I want to do the stuff. But he was unsuccessful in doing the stuff until Frisbee Spoke at his church. We talked about that. After Frisbee asked all the young people under 25 to come forward, they all fell on the floor. It was like a battlefield. They all shook. They all spoke gibberish. Wimber asked God if this was of him. And that night at Calvary Chapel, a preacher named Tom Stipe called Wimber on the phone and said, I have a word for you. The Lord says, this is me. Wimber should have tested the Frisbee anointing, but he didn't. So the elders of the church at Wimber's church called for a meeting, right? All of a sudden, I'm seeing this guy next to me, this PhD in microbiology, begin to shake it. He's begun to shake under the presence of God, the presence of God coming. So I begin to stand up. The power of God knocks this guy down, and he began to roll under my feet on the ground, screaming hysterically. The power of God came down on everybody in the room, and it was just absolutely mind-boggling. Listen to this. You ready? Here's some more witchy poo. Frisbee had a leather jacket with a picture of Jesus on the back that he used to impart the spirit. The transference of the spirit is a pagan practice, but it has been a major element of Pentecostalism from its inception. Usually hands are used as the transference agent, but Benny Hinn often uses his jacket or his breath to transfer the spirit. And Rodney Howard Brown has used a towel and other things. Wimber interpreted the phenomena as the power of the Holy Spirit, but it was a deceiving spirit. The apostles and early church leaders didn't fall down and shake and speak in meaningless gibberish. I am not even going to have time to get to the rest of it, friend. Wimber's church experienced massive growth and young people started baptizing friends in hot tubs and swimming pools. John would speak and Lonnie would minister. They were the dynamic duo. Lonnie got up there and he'd wave his leather coat and the power of God would come and people would be falling all over these old pews in these Baptist churches. And Lonnie would start climbing over the pews and start laying hands on people, saying, speak in tongues. So I was blown away by that. All right. In the one service in South Africa, Frisbee asked children,
to come forward. Let's see if I can find this video. Ah, oh, it's not available anymore. Took it down, they did. We're not even going to get into Leary and Leary and Manson. We don't have time. Wimber played a huge role in the spread of charismatic heresy throughout the evangelicalism. He yoked up with uh, C. Peter Wagner, the Fuller Theological Seminary, and taught a course on signs and wonders. When Frisbee died of AIDS in 1993, at the age of 43, a memorial service was held. Robert Schuler's Crystal Cathedral. Head Mason. Right? Big time 33rd G Mason. 33rd degree Mason. Right? Barry's Frisbee underneath there, huh? At the Crystal Cathedral. Yeah, nice. All right, everybody. We are going to stop right there, and we are going to pick it up again on Wednesday. I'm going to go through that other article and mine out some good stuff, also with a bunch of scriptures and other things that we will. I know there was a lot of reading in this. Um, there's more. There's definitely more connections. I want to show you the Independent Fundamental Baptist connection there with with uh, some things. There's more. So let's play a song here. Give you a chance to say hi. And we'll talk a little bit and remind you about our trip here, and then we'll get out of here, okay? All right, let's see here. Then sings my soul, then sings my soul, then sings my soul. Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars, the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy I power throughout the universe display Then sings my soul I sing my Savior God to thee, my God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, your God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God. Bled and died to 
take away my sin. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow then I shall bow in humble Sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, my God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. That was Ben Everson. How great thou art. That's on YouTube. You can find that on his channel. I don't agree with all of his songs. There's a few that I think are a little bit off, but uh, most of it is very good music. Uh, so I am always give a word of caution. If I hear it's like same thing with Ron Hamilton. I love a lot of Ron Hamilton stuff, but there's a few songs uh, that are not quite right. So anyway, but uh, so I, I tell people the truth about things like that, but I don't throw out everything because I don't think they're not all bad or anything like that. There's a lot of great, great music there. All right. Please pray for our trip. Uh, we are going to Europe, as you know, that some of you may not have been on the broadcast earlier. Please pray uh, that we are going April 16th, Sunday afternoon. We take off, Brother Andrew and I do. And uh, we are praying for our paperwork to get back, praying for everything to get back that we need uh, to be able to, to, um, you know, uh, get over there. We're going to Europe. We're going, we're going to be preaching in the UK. We're going to be preaching. Uh, that's great. Britain, Scotland, uh, we'll be in Ireland. Uh, we will be in, uh, uh, Scotland, Ireland. Uh, we will be in, uh, let's see. We'll be in Croatia. Okay. Uh, we will be in Italy and in Rome. And a number of different places. And we'll be broadcasting live from those places. And and uh, no, I'm not going to have an audience with the Pope. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I, but I am going to use the footage for what we need to use it for in the future. Amen. But anyway, so... Um, but uh, And the Jesuit stuff that's over there, I'll be looking at getting uh, information from and all that. But if you'd like to help support our trip, because it's not cheap. Okay, we're going by faith. We're believing God. We are trusting God. And uh, our church is donating Old Paz Baptist Church, the members. And, uh, you know, you members of Old Paz Baptist Church, you think about what God would have you to give towards that uh, so we can get everything paid. And, and many members have given uh, uh, also and others, okay, out there. You all out there, please consider giving to us, okay, uh, for the for the trip and to uh, pay for everything that's going on. You won't be sorry. It'll be a blessing to you, and it'll be a blessing to the folks over there. We're trying to be an encouragement to the saints. If you're over in that area, if you are going to be in, if you are in Britain, if you are in Ireland, if you are in Scotland, if you are in Italy, if you are in any of those places that we're going to be in, would you please contact us? I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to meet you. If you've listened to our, our ministry and all that kind of stuff, we'd love to meet you. So, so, uh, get in touch with us. Okay. Uh, these are all the ways that you can give right here. And, uh, there's the mailing address right there for all that. So those are the ways that you can give. All right. Enough of that, but you know how to do that. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, you can always email me or at, at this, this is an email address too. This is an email address too. That's also our PayPal address, but it's also an email address. You can email me and ask me any questions that you might have about any of those things. All right. We are not a 501 C three. We are, we're not a, a corporation. So uh, we don't do all that kind of stuff. We're just, we're just uh, a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and and I'm a pastor of that, and and we live by faith. 
So we trust the Lord and God provides. Amen. And uh, he uses uh, you and he uses the members of Old Paths Baptist Church to be a blessing to their pastor and and uh, and all that stuff. So we're grateful for that. Okay. But anyway, you pray about that, what God would have you to do there. Now, let's get back to it on Wednesday here, Lord willing, 2 p.m. Central Time. We'll go back and do it again. And by the way, thank you to all of you that have given uh, thus far. Thank you for your uh, your Christian charity and your love. Okay, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, we're we're very touched by that. I appreciate uh, your prayers and and your your giving and your desire to help us. Okay, uh, and uh, you pray for souls to be saved. You pray for God to use the preaching and teaching of His Word as we go out there. Okay. All right, everybody. I'm getting out of here. I I'm I'm eight minutes overdue here. Uh, but, uh, cause I got to get going here. So anyway, God bless y'all. I got to go, go for a walk and pray.